so let us recall that in the previous lecture given topological spaces x and y uh, with topologies let us say tau x and tau y uh, we defined a topology on x cross y. So, how do we do this? We, defi we first defined a collection B is a subset of power set of x cross y and it is defined as follows. It is a set of u cross v such that u is open in x in the topology in x and v is open in the topology in y. Right? And uh, we check that b satisfies the two conditions. required to generate a topology. Namely, these were A, uh, when we take the union over all subsets W in B, we should get the entire space, in this case that is x cross y and the second is uh, given W1 and W2 in B and a point x in the intersection, then there exists a w in b such that x is in w and w is contained in w1 intersection w2. Uh, so, we check that b satisfies these two conditions and using these we define the topology on x cross y with b as basis and uh, let us observe that the same idea can be used to put a topology first on a finite product i equal to 1 to n x size. So, here the x size are topological spaces. with topologies tau x i's or just tau i's. So, uh, what do we do? We define B contained in the power set of these product as B is equal to a product of u i's where uh, each u i is in tau x i. And then I will leave this as an exercise and it can be done in the same way, check that. So, we have already done this when n is equal to 2 and the same uh, proof will show that b satisfies the two conditions required to generate a topology on this product. So, uh, this topology that is the topology generated by B is called the, the product topology. So, so, right now we took a finite product of topological spaces, we can ask what happens in the case of a infinite product. Yeah? So, let us consider, so next let us consider the case I be a set possibly infinite and assume that 
for each i in i, we are given topological spaces. For each i and i, we are given a topological space x i. Right. So, how can we put a topology on the set product i in i x i s. Okay. So, now here there are two possible candidates for topologies. So, let us see. So, we can define d in two ways. Uh, so, in this case, we can define the collection B in two ways. So, first is we define B to be is the most naive one. i in i, where each u i is in tau x i. Okay, this is the first candidate. So, one can check that. It is easy to check again. So, let us call this b 1. This collection b 1 satisfies the two conditions. required to generate topology and so uh, this defines a topology let us say tau 1 on this product. So, uh, this topology is called the box topology. The other candidate for B is, follow, is as follows. Let us call this B 2. right? So, this is product of I in I u i such that what we want is we put the extra condition that u i is equal to x i for all but finitely many i's. So, let me just write this. So, u i belongs to tau x i and uh, when we look at this is condition this is the first condition let us call this a and the second condition we want is when we look at the collection. of i in i says that u i is not equal to x i. Recall that each u i is contained in x i. Right? So, we look at the collection of those indi indices for which u i is a proper subset of x i and uh, what we want is should be finite. So, this collection, this collection over here that should be finite, which means that except for finitely many i's indices, all the ui's are equal to xi. Uh, so, this topology, so once again check that B2 satisfies the two conditions to define a topology tau 2 and this topology is called the product topology. On this product of x i s. Okay. So, uh, just some remarks. Uh, 
Okay, so the following remarks. So for us, the box topology is not useful and we will see reasons for this very soon and throughout this course when we uh, talk of on this product of topological spaces when i is infinite set uh, we shall always be considering the pro the topology tau 2 and tau 2 so when we say the product topology on an infinite product of topological spaces xi we shall always mention this we shall always be referring to the second topology uh, defined using the basis B2. Okay. So, let us make some remarks. Okay. So, the following two remarks are obvious. Uh, one is when the index set is finite. So, that is if we take a set i such that cardinality of i is finite, right. So, then it is clear that the box topology is equal to the product topology. In fact, B1 is equal to B2 if this index set is finite. Okay. So, that is a easy check. When cardinality of i is infinite, we have B2 is contained in B1 and B1 we know is contained in tau 1. So, recall that we had proved the lemma that if x is a topological space and tau 1 and tau 2 are two topologies on x with basis B1 and B2 and if B1 is contained in tau 2 then we get that tau 1 is contained in tau 2. Right? So, using this lemma in our situation we have B2 is contained in tau 1. So, this will imply that tau 2 is contained in tau 1. So, this is the product topology and this is the box topology. In fact, tau 1 is much larger than tau 2. Okay. So, as we had as I had mentioned before uh, we will almost never use the box topology in this course we will always use the product topology. Mm -hmm. So, so far uh, So, since now that we have introduced box topology, I am sorry, not box topology, product topology, and subspace topology. Uh, we have several examples we can construct. Several examples of topological spaces. So, let us see some of the most important examples which we will encounter in this course. So, First is we have the standard topology on the real line, we have the standard topology on R2, 
R n. Okay. So, on this on R n let me make a remark on R n we have the standard topology let us call this S and the product topology. Because we can write R n we can think of R n as the product of R n times right and each each of these R carries the standard topology and where each factor R carries the standard topology. Right. So, claim. So, let us call the product topology tau. Claim S is equal to tau. So, the standard topology on R n is equal to the product topology on R n and an easy way to prove this prove this is to uh, show that let B be a basis for S. B a basis not not let b1 uh, we had already defined a basis for let b1 be the basis for s using the sets uh, i don't remember the notation now maybe uh, s epsilon x these epsilon squares around point of x and let B 2 be the basis for the product topology for tau, which we B 2 is the basis which we had used to define tau, right. So, then show that B 1 is equal to B 2, right. So, this will automatically imply that S is equal to tau. So, okay. So, in other words, this means that on R n we have put two topologies, the first is a standard topology and the other is a product topology, and both these topologies agree. So, which is a nice thing. So, second we can take S1, this is the set of those, this is the circle, the unit circle in R2, in R2 such that x square plus y square is equal to 1 with the subspace topology. So, this is the unit circle okay. and similarly we can define S n these are the unit spheres this is x naught up to x n in R n plus 1 such that summation i equal to 0 to n x i square is equal to 1. Again with the subspace topology, so here the subspace topology is from R 2. Obviously, with the subspace topology from R n plus 1. Okay. Uh, the fourth example is the set of n cross n matrices over R. This is the set of n cross n matrices with real coefficients. Right. So, this set is in bijection with R n square right and R n square carries the product topology the product topology So, using the topology on R n square, since M n R is in bijection with R n square, we can 
uh, transfer the topology from Rn square to MnR. So in other words, uh, we can take uh, right. We can take a map phi from MnR to Rn square, and uh, for every open set over here, so this is a bijection. So for every open set over here, we can take phi inverse. Okay, so, in other words, tau we define tau to be phi inverse u, where u is open in Rn square in the standard topology. Right? So, then tau defines a topology on MnR. Okay? So, uh, in fact, we can do this. So, if x is a topological space, we can do this generally, it is a topological space and phi from y to x is a bijection, then we can define the topology on y uh, using phi uh, by tau let us say y comma phi this topology will depend a priori it will depend on phi this is defined as phi inverse u where u is open in x. Yeah. So, check that tau y comma phi is a topology. Okay. Uh, phi. Uh, let's look at this set G L and R. This is the set of those matrices A in M and R. Says so that determinant of A is not equal to zero, and we give this the subspace topology. from M and R. So, M and R we have uh, identified with uh, R n square and using that we give a topology to M and R and G L and R is a subset of M and R. So, we can take the subspace topology from M and R on and put it to G L and R. So, this makes G L and R a topological space. And similarly, we have we can take various sets of M and R. and put the subspace topology on all of these. We have the orthogonal groups <coughs> So, A transpose A should be identity, then we have the special orthogonal groups. determinant of A is equal to 1. Uh, okay. So, uh, next we can put a topology on complex numbers as follows. In the same way that we put uh, the topology on a topology on tau on R, sorry. So uh, we take tau is the collection of sets U in C such that for all which have the property that 
which satisfy the following condition for all x in u uh, there exists epsilon which depends on x such that uh, okay let me use a notation z for complex numbers which depends on z such that this open ball of radius epsilon around z which is defined to be those complex numbers y says that absolute value of y minus the modulus of y minus z is less than epsilon. So, we want for every z in u there should be an epsilon positive such that this ball is contained in u. Right? So, in other words this complex numbers and this some um, u. So, this we say that it is open in this topology if for any point there exists a small ball a small disk around z which is completely contained inside u. Right? Alternatively we could have done the following there is a bijection phi from c okay, let us say r 2 to right which is x comma y maps to x plus i y. And we can take the standard topology on R2 and since this is a bijection and use it to define a topology on C. So, this is so tau is equal to phi of u where u is open in R2 in the standard topology. So, let me call this tau 1 and let me call this tau 2 right and easy exercise. Show that tau one is equal to tau two. Okay. Both these topologies are going to be the same. Okay. So we have put a topology on complex numbers, and once again, so we can put so using the topology on C. we can put a topology on m and c which is the set of n cross n matrices with complex coefficients. So, how do we do this? It is in the same way. So, we identify m and c is in bijection with c n square. So, exactly as in the case of R what we can do is we can take a matrix a 1 1 a 1 n a 2 1 a 2 n and so on and we can send this to first we can write the let us say row vector a 1 1 up to a 1 n. Then we can write the next row a 2 1 up to a 2 n and this goes on and finally, we have the last row a n 1 to a n n. Yeah. Uh, so, we could have done the same thing for real also for m n r also. So, let me say m n r to r n square. We have the same bijection and then uh, we can pull back. So, using this bijection, so c n square has the product topology. right where each copy of c has a standard topology so by standard topology i mean the topology defined over here okay has a standard topology and then and using this bijection we can put a topology on m and c. Okay. 
So, uh, so just as we considered subsets of M and R, we can consider the following subsets of M and C. We can take G L and C, the set of those A in M and C, such that determinant of A is not equal to 0 with the subspace topology. from M and C. Then we can take S L and C, the same, so here determinant of A is equal to 1. Then we have the unitary groups A in M and C says that A star A is identity, right. And finally, we have the special unitary groups. and determinant of A is equal to 1. So, we have constructed various examples of topological spaces and uh, for all the above examples, we can study their topological properties. So, the main uh, topological properties we will consider in this course are compactness, well first connectedness, path connectedness, and compactness. These will be defined later on in this course. Okay. So, uh, and now that we have constructed all these examples, that sort of uh, brings the first part of this course to an end. What we have basically seen is the definition of topology uh, and how to construct examples of topological spaces, new topological spaces from ones which we already know. So, maybe we can phrase it new topological spaces from old ones. And in order to, when we study, in order to study topological properties of these spaces, it is often good if we can uh, relate them is just in the same way that when we study groups, in order to study group theoretic properties of groups, it is very, uh, it can be very convenient if we have group homomorphisms. So, we can study homomorphisms from one group into other groups and that helps us to say some things about the properties of our original group. So, in the same way we will, next we shall see. introduce the notion of continuous maps between topological spaces. Uh, so, we will end this lecture here.